Hey, welcome back to Unschooled Theology. I am uh, one of your hosts, Derek. With me is your other host, Evan. Hello. Hey. All right. We are diving in here on day four of creation. Uh, as a quick reminder, um, our guiding principle, our, gu our guiding approach here to creation is the idea that God is moving things from a state of chaos into a sense of his order. Uh, so that is that is what we're really looking at. And on uh, day four here, it's Genesis 1, 14 through 19. So I'm going to read that real quick. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on earth, to rule over day and over night and separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. All right. So this is often paired with with the creation uh, that we see in day one, obviously. Uh, since it relates so heavily to lightness and, and darkness, as we saw, though, perhaps you could uh, create it with uh, day two. You could pair it with day two, right? Uh, or not day two, I'm sorry, day three, right? In these two-day pairings. Um, but uh, setting that aside for now, I think one of the things that's fascinating here is that we get the purpose clarified before the creation takes place. We don't see that prior to this moment, mm. right? We didn't see that on the first three days. Um, and this is perhaps the most direct stating of the reason behind creation up to this point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so why that may be um, may actually have more to do with sort of ancient cultures than our modern cultures. And that is because uh, in Mesopotamian belief systems, astral bodies were very significant, very, mm -hmm. very significant, uh, often being gods themselves, right? So by, by God coming here and saying, here's what these things exist for, Mm -hmm. uh, he's giving them a, a purpose, in fact, a, a supremely important level of, pur uh, of purpose, but it is a very direct rejection of the idea that they are, in fact, uh, divine uh, figures themselves. Yeah, it's and subduing so, them. It's, yes, yes, it is, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's bringing them down to, to a level, for sure. Um, yeah. Where, where they're meant to be but it but still there is i mean there's a tremendous level of importance to them i think packed into this verse and we'll see that here right there, there's significance of yeah. course but but, yeah. but they're not gods exactly yeah yeah they're not independent entities you know i mean it's almost as in this instance they're 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 puppets at best serving a, a, a greater significant purpose right you right. know and they're and they're certainly not at that at that point they're serving the purpose of 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 humanity as we're reading it yes. which is far different than the way in which a god might be approached whereas humanity is serving the purpose of the the deity right right and that's um that's yeah. a big i mean difference. he he you know let them be signs to mark these things well then you need signs to again, who? building up to humanity right who will eventually be the one for whom these signs exist yeah, who receives those um, signs yeah and, and there is quite a bit here that, I mean, this verse actually, I think really from start to finish is, or that not this verse, this day of creation is really, really tearing down that, uh, that surrounding culture's idea of these being divine figures, because mm -hmm. element after element does that, right? Uh, let the lights be lights. Mm -hmm. That is a, a tautology, which is uh, a... A is A, is a, a, a tautological claim, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that is to emphasize the lack of divinity of these lights. Not that let the lights be lights and gods. It's let the lights a is not be B. lights. Yeah. A is yeah. A. Well, a, a, is, a is not B and A is not A and B. A is A, right? Is what yeah. this is saying. 
Yeah. Um, and then again, we see that the sun and the moon here are not specifically named. It's, it's instead the greater light and the lesser light. And that's because those names were references to the deities yeah. that the others worship. That's what those would have been called. Um, and, and in a way too, there's, we see here the casual, the very casual mention of the stars. It's, it's like he created the, the greater, the lesser, and then also the stars, you know, like it's, it's almost just like thrown in at the end. It's, it's very mm -hmm. casually mentioned and each of those and in, in some of the cultures are, are sort of a deity of their own. Um, and that to me all further emphasizes that reality and all of this stuff together. I, I, I personally use the word antagonistic because uh, that is actually how firm the rejection of this is. And given that there was a, a sense in terms of religious beliefs at that time that you would just sort of wrap other cultures, religious beliefs into your own, their gods become your gods and, and all the gods together because, Hey, I mean, more gods, how, what could go wrong? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so to to so firmly come out and deny all that is in a way antagonistic that's that's yeah the term that i keep falling back on yeah um but uh, that's okay so that's the ancient perspective here that i see but i want to turn to that idea of the carelessness again with which we see the stars being tossed yeah we, we see that in one verse before we continue that, yeah. I want to take one second on the on the physical elements because we talked sure. about that and and build on it. Well, I think it supports the initial reading of verses of day one of okay. the sev of let's create let's cre God created light and dark mm -hmm. as being separate elements from sun moon stars. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and so the the more allegorical, I suppose, reading of that. Not, not saying that light and darkness weren't created, but the 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 um, symbolic meaning of light yes. versus darkness. I think this that's supported by saying that these two things, lightness and darkness, were separated. And then here's the sources that are going to be of lightness and darkness. I think that that's significant, that those are two separate things that are created at, at different times. Mm -hmm. That means that, okay, light right. and, and dark can be read more as being, not not only as being, but in addition to it as being something to represent, you know, certainty, uncertainty, whatever you want to say, um, yeah, different I things would, like that. Whereas here- I would say not even can be, should be, yeah. Yes, I yes. would say it, it goes that far to say, well, it should yeah. be read that yeah. way, but- It's not implying that the, that, 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 the sun is light. It's simply a source of light. It's right. the greater source of light. And then the moon is the lesser source of light, which I think, yeah, that that's a big difference between the two. Agreed. Agreed. Um, okay. Let's so go to the stars. Let's go so, to the stars. Yeah, so moving on. So we see here, uh, and let me uh, read it clearly. Uh, so, and again, I'll, I'll point out, it's just, it's, it's casual, right? And God made the two great lights, the great light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars <laughs> yeah. just tossed in. But then in the next verse, right? So that has a sense of carelessness to it. But in the next verse, we return to a sentiment that I, I think we see at the beginning because he says, and God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on earth. And so. Again, you know, heavens is sky. Yes. Heavens yes. can be Again, best read as sky yep. here, not as, yep. not as the sure. heavenly realm. For sure. Um, which is also a distinction. In which we've, yeah, in which we've talked about it, the, the spiritual realm, the spiritual heavenly realm. Um, so we see in the first verse, right, that it, God is creating these specifically to mark signs and seasons. Mm -hmm. And that implies, obviously, a requirement for careful placement. Mm -hmm. So the, the casualness we see in the one verse doesn't negate the the uh the need for careful placement or the importance of careful placement i think that's very significant very much meant to signify to readers they're not significant in a uh in a in a divine sense in a in a mm -hmm. spiritual sense however in a in a sort of earthly realm not the earth the earthly realm sense they are important right yeah 
um, they must be carefully placed. And so in, in verse 17, we see this idea of God setting them in the sky, not tossing them, yeah. not, not, you know, just throwing them out there, but he's carefully placing them and setting them in the sky. Yeah. Um, and, and I think this is something that as we grow to understand the nature of our universe and how finely tuned uh, our universe is, I think we see more and more indication of a, a, a well thought out and planned design, hmm. if that makes some sense. Yes. I, I mean, I think this comes back to our idea last week about predictability. Yes, very much so. I mean, the days in the year, fundamentally seasons, days, and years mm -hmm. and signs that indicate that are, are predictable because days, years, and seasons could exist without signs to indicate them. Right. right. So the signs to indicate them are, are further, further um, are doubling down on, on the importance of predictability of the rhythmic, within, right. the, with, within the context of humanity existing, mm -hmm. that, that we require some sort of rhythm and ability to understand what, what we can expect to come. You know, when we yeah. see the signs of fall, that means that after that winter is likely to come. So mm -hmm. things are going to get cold. It's not like things are going to get warm again. It's going to get cold a little bit and then get really hot. It's, it's the predictability is very important for humanity's yeah. existence. Yeah. Kind of stability um, to that. Which does imply care. Yeah. Oh, for sure. In the establishment of those things. For sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's, that's sort of the first purpose. And then at the end of the verse, we see the ex, uh, sort of an extension of the purpose of these things, uh, which is the idea to govern the day and the night. And this to me is, is obviously uh, very heavily symbolic. Um, if we remember that what's outside God's order is night and what is inside God order, God's order is day. We talked about this on day one of creation. Mm -hmm. um, and here, what I see very specifically is God proclaiming a kind of sovereignty over the night. Mm -hmm. The day is all his, where it's all mm -hmm. light. And the night has darkness. However, the lesser light is there, right? And so God still holds sovereignty over it. Uh, and, and in thinking about that, I think actually the phases of the moon becomes very interest, interesting, right? Because what that tells us there, because the light that exists overnight varies. Mm -hmm. I, I think that tells us that his involvement with the darkness varies, right? There are times in which he will intervene with the darkness, a full moon. And there are times as which it will seem like he's almost not there. It's still there. The moon is still there, but it's almost as though he's not there, right? And that's a, a new moon. So he's always watching over it and he is sovereign over it. But the, the extent to which his light will penetrate the darkness is something that varies. Mm. That's what the, the phases of the moon uh, symbolically represent to us. Interesting. So there's variance. Yes. Yes. God is still sovereign over the night. There's no variance to the day. The day is the day is day. It's we, we always have the light. The sun comes up in the morning. It's there all day. Right. Um, you know, I mean, an eclipse, we could argue, we, we could, we could get into that, right. The symbolic nature of the eclipse. Nature it's like the even, eclipse. even, even for a brief moment, occasionally, even the day will look like it's being, uh, taken over by the darkness but it, it, it that will only ever be so brief um but even that variance is predictable uh yes it is predictable um even to, to an extent man. for sure yeah yep the phases of the moon and whatnot there is a predictability to that and no so, even a solar eclipse is a is oh yeah it's a predictable thing right i mean and one could argue that that foreshadows the the death of christ I mean, at the death of Christ, we, there is, there is, there an, is eclipse, an eclipse, right? Yeah, yeah. And one could argue that the, the, the routine nature of eclipses serves as a, almost a reminder of that, you know, as, yeah. as a symbolic representation and reminder of that, that yeah. fact, right? Yeah. That for a brief moment, it even seems like the darkness is one, but three days later, you know, the sun returns, right? Um, yeah. 
so that is that is an element that may be wrapped into there and of course the the phases of the moon uh, you know as you're saying th those are rhythmic and predictable too um so although there is a variance to the way in which the the darkness you know god shines his light into the darkness i it it's probably not something we want to do here on this episode because it would take too long but i think there's potentially an argument that could be made that there is a rhythmic nature to even that right there's a rhythmic nature um to the way that darkness sort of advances in our world and then is pushed back right and, and sort of the influence of god within our world there's you could make a case that history we talk about history being cyclical right Mm -hmm. is that cyclical the the kind of the darkness pushing forward and being pushed back and pushing forward and being pushed back maybe that's that's a part of that as well you know what about even in the context of an individual life yeah i you know there is the dark uh, night of the soul is something that's described yeah, quite yeah frequently. something is, like is, that yeah is is that mm -hmm. is that feeling of complete unknown and yeah darkness. well and, and we ourselves i think have a rhythm and a cycle to that as well you know we have we have moments where we we give in to the darkness more and come back out of it and give in more and come back out you know and we uh, as much as we'd like to stay in the light for good we we all at least have the possibility of of ending up in a in a new moon situation yeah yeah very so, interesting um all right well let's uh Let's move on from that real quickly, um, because there is a lot uh, in this in this uh, verse. Again, as we've talked about, we could probably have done each of these days uh, a few episodes each, but we're trying to move at a uh, for us a fast pace <laughs> through this yeah. um, because at these a rapid crawl. Yeah, yeah, exactly. These ideas will return, right? These yeah. ideas will return uh, throughout the the Bible uh, when we talk about these. Um, but as I want to, I want to, and this is uh, perhaps just a, a, a more of a speculation discussion for you and I, but I want to pose the idea that these stars and whatnot are posed, are, are, are proposed to be signs in the sky, right? To mark seasons and just as signs. Um, and the reason I say just as signs is we know that the Bible has used the stars and the astral bodies to mark momentous occasions, right? Um, a, a God's covenant with Abraham references the stars. It, mm -hmm. it plays a big role there. The Magi seeking Christ, they're following the, a sign the in star. the stars. And even uh, Jesus's death is marked by an unexpected eclipse that we actually have multiple recordings of outside of the Bible as well. Um, this sort of un unexpected eclipse that marks his death. So um, we see this idea of, of stars proposing uh, or, or posing as signs. Mm -hmm. um, are, are we done with that? You know, like just because we know the seasons and can recognize the seasons from the stars and we know the patterns the stars go through, are the, are the signs from the stars over, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna make I'm gonna I'm gonna make one suggestion that maybe not right. Perhaps there is a kind of sign of sorts that we get as as humanity uh, as we begin to interact with the stars. So this is not the same as like our viewing the stars and our understanding their cycles, right? Which was is the first way we have the signs from the stars. Mm -hmm. But perhaps, and this ties in, I guess, to our discussion um, that we've talked about uh, back in one of the early episodes, and it's a theme that's going to start to come out more as we move through the Bible, but the idea of the maturation of humanity being represented yeah. in the story of the Bible and that hum humanity itself is maturing and going through a maturing process is our ability to interact with the stars which we seem to be on the verge of, right? In the sense yeah. of, of perhaps visiting other planets at some point, maybe even in our lifetimes, who knows, but this seems to be something we're working towards. Is that a sign of a sort, right? And we don't know what it's necessarily a sign of, but perhaps it is, you know, perhaps it's a, a sign of a sort. I don't, I don't know exactly, but the, the idea that they were meant to be 
to house signs in a way. Um, I don't know why there would be a sunset on that necessarily, right? The the magi following, you know, the the stars was that just the last one? Yeah, I think that that's it. That that's a possibility. I have multiple thoughts on it. Number one, the significance of a sign and not a cause, mm-hmm. which 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 separates it from astrology Mm -hmm. exactly is is that is that astrology is that the stars cause particular things and that this is a this is a separation from that Mm -hmm. which is also how this ends up being a separation from again a distinction maybe antagonistic to mid to to near eastern thought of the stars being deities in this context they're set in the heavens they're set in the sky and then they're manipulated and used by God in order to, to project signs and possibilities. Yes. So I think that yes. that's a potential, yeah. a potential sign. Our ability to interact with them being a sign, it's possible. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, that's just a, that's, that's, that's something casually tossed out there as, as yeah. a potential way in which they're, they're not done being signs. But I mean, if they're I think used we... as signs, one, one would argue, though, that that how frequently are they used as signs might be the, the best question that no and i get that um but i would say that our ability to go to the moon many people have taken that absolutely as a moment you know for humanity we've yeah. many people look at that and say we've reached some new level right yeah i don't know what kind of level but we've reached a new level yeah so I, you know, we could, we could look at it that way and say, okay, well, our interaction with their, at least uh, we had a gut instinct where this meant that humanity had reached some new plateau. It was a sign that we had gotten somewhere, you know, I yeah. don't know what, I don't know that maybe that's not the kind of thing that will be understood for five centuries from now, right? Just what yeah. the significance of that plateau was. Yeah. Um, so maybe we don't understand that sign in the moment, but we, we, we at least gut instinct level felt that that was a sign. And that's why people will, will even refer to it and say, wait, we can go to the moon, but we can't do this. Right. Yes, like okay. that's a, yeah. that's a phrase, you know, you, that, that yeah. is in the lexicon, um, because that clearly indicates something to us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A capability of yeah. some sort. Yeah. 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 So I don't know, just, uh, it was just a thought I had that, that was it like, represents- well, that's a curiosity, you know, about yeah. this day and this element of science. Are, are we really done with that? Yeah. There's a lot that you could do there. Yeah. You could jump there's, I mean, there's, there's so my, much. my thought process goes to like, goes to like, uh, goes to light pollution and the potential of us not being able to see stars oh, as sure. much anymore. So are yep. we not able to perceive signs yep. that are being yeah. given to us as much anymore? Yeah, in a way, like, yeah. You, you could spend some time there um, oh, for, for sure for sure sitting on that that's that that's interesting what mm-hmm. the stars ultimately represent to us because mm-hmm. certainly but i i don't mean yeah i don't think you need i don't think you need the bible to 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 communicate to you that 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 going to the moon was potentially a significant thing no no you, you, you don't you don't but um but i guess my point is why was going to the moon a significant thing? You know, it was like, that's, that was clearly a more significant thing than many, many discoveries on earth, you know, even right at this point, it's like, we would look at going to the moon as a more significant event than Magellan's uh, traversing the globe, right? Yeah. Uh, or the discovery of the Americas or whatever, right? We would look at going to the moon as being the, the more significant accomplishment um, yeah. than all those things. I think because it's, it is, uh, it's substantially different, right? And yeah. the, the stars and the, the astral bodies are substantially different in that way. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and keep that idea of uh, light mm. pollution in your head. We're going to get to that actually when we talk about uh, the line of Cain down the road. So we'll, we'll exactly. come back to that. And like I said, we'll come back to all these ideas. We'll get into the lights when we get to there. So, um, all right, summarizing this episode here, once again, the way we're wrapping up each day, what has been brought from darkness into light? What have we learned about God's order? I see two things that are interrelated um, 
the first is a very meticulous design. And the second is that there is a rhythmic nature to that mm -hmm. sign. Uh, that's certainly the seasons, the, the years, all of that. It's very rhythmic, very predictable, as you've, you've said many times. Yeah. That is what we're really getting. That's what we're sort of taught about God's creation uh, on day four. So, and uh, join us for day five. We'll be back uh, soon with that. Check us out, uh, subscribe wherever you can, uh, like, follow, comment, review, whatever, all of those things. Email us at unschooledtheology at protonmail.com and we will, uh, we'll see you then.